<clears throat> right then, so what we've done is uh, last session we painted, or I painted my model uh, with my lighter colours first and then I painted the green and I finished off with the spikes, the protein spikes being red. Okay, in order to um, try and kind of make the wings look a little bit more interesting, I have uh, kind of painted these little uh, zigzags at the bottom of the wings. All right, so what we're going to do now very quickly is I'm going to show you how to do the dry brushing. What you need for this is a quite a thick paintbrush. All right, this dry brushing effect adds the highlights, which will then make the whole thing look really, really textural. All right, so. Um, what I will do is again, we can start off with the lighter colours. Uh, so we're going to mix here, on here I'm going to mix a um, orange, all right, because we we need it to be just that slightly bit darker, but I also need it to be lighter. So I'm going to add a touch of red, uh, sorry, white. Now what you need to do is with this look, you don't need to be adding too much um, paint at all because we're actually going to fill the paintbrush with the paint and then we're going to uh, kind of empty the paintbrush of its paint and then we're going to kind of dry brush over the top all right so we only need the tiniest amount of red so I put a little bit on my paintbrush okay and then I'll mix it in as long as that orange is only just a little bit darker than the red then we are fine Okay, remember like I said yesterday, if you mix too little amount, don't worry, you can always mix more, but it's better to mix too little than it is to mix too much, because then you have uh, nothing left. Uh, so you've got loads left over. Alright, so, here we've got uh, absolutely plenty of paint. Can you see if I kind of twist the brush there, um, it's actually, it's emptying. Alright, now what we need to do is you can't paint with that, there is far too much paint on it. So, we need to empty the brush. Okay, so, we, you just need to kind of almost paint, and you need a piece of paper right nearby so you can get rid of the most amount of your paint in your paintbrush. Right? Now, to finish it off, okay, I'm just going to rub a little bit of excess paint, making sure I've got it out of the edge of the brush just here as well, okay, just where the metal meets the bristles. All right, and what I'm going to do is just kind of pick up a tiny amount again, kind of feather it in, all right, and I'm just going to have a bit of a test. So I'm just going to make sure that I have done that dark enough, all right, or have I, do I need to maybe add a touch more um, red? All right, so you can't actually see it on the um, peaks of the eyelashes. All right, so probably need to just add a touch more red. Now, because I've spread this out across the card, hopefully it will now work. There we go. Okay, so all we do is we just very carefully, right, feather in the edge of the paintbrush over the top of all those bumps and those interesting textures. All right, we're not painting it. All right, we're just going over those interesting textures. Right, so I'll bring it a bit closer and you can see what's happening. Right, so if you have too much in your brush, right, it's not going to work as well. You see there, I'm just kind of going over the top. All right, and that's called dry brushing. So it's just kind of putting quite a lot of um, paint over the top of the uh, textures so that it kind of pulls it out and it kind of make, basically makes the, the texture stand out a little bit more. I'll just do this one here. Whoops, you see there, I've had a bit too much paint on my paintbrush there. It's fine though, because we're going to use a little bit of white just to lighten that up. And then again, we can do the same with the wings here. Or if I um, was spending quite a lot more time on this, I might then, uh, I might start adding some patterns into the wings to make it look veiny. Right, I can paint those in. Okay, and then just dry brushing, there we go, I'm starting to get rid of quite a lot of the paint now. So I should have been a bit more patient and got rid of more paint. Okay, and again there. It's 
quite a satisfying job to do the dry brushing because it, it kind of pulls out all of the hard work that you've done to make your monster very very texturous textural <clears throat> all right so what we'll do now is i will add just a dollop of white okay, onto here and now we're going to try and make the um these bits stand out even more all right so i'm just gonna I fill my paintbrush with the white paint and again empty it. I don't, I'm not going to be quite as strict with emptying it to, uh, um, at the moment. Okay, I just want to get rid of the clump so it is dry and by dry brushing it means it is, it's not kind of painting into the grooves of everything, it's just kind of going over the top. Alright, and now so I'll just do this one here. We will now paint a lighter colour over the top, which then pulls it out even more. This will this creates the um, texture of the COVID cell as well. You might not want to go and do dry brushing over everything. I am, but that doesn't mean you have to. You might want some bits really, really smooth. And again on the wings. Now if you run out of paint, okay, then all you do is fill your paintbrush up again, rub it out, so you've got your dry brushing <coughs> effect over the top. For monsters, the dry brushing effect is really quite good because most monsters have got a uh, quite a, almost like a reptilian skin sometimes. Some of us have got fairy ones if you watch your Monsters Inc. Uh, there's no harm here if your monster is quite fairy or you want it to be fairy, there's no harm. And at this point, <clears throat> as we're starting to kind of perfect it, why not get some, um, get some fabric, glue some fur to it if you have the resources. Okay? If you've got some felt at home, that might be quite nice. Okay, and that's your dry brushing. <clears throat> so all you do is with this white now, I'm just going to go over the top. Okay, and I'm using the um, faint yellow uh, effect because uh, it keeps everything in, in, I call it a family, but it keeps everything together. All right, so it looks as though the white, the yellow of the monster is reflected into the green of the monster. A little cheap. Right, makes it look um, <clears throat> a little bit more realistic rather than having completely separate colours. Okay, so I'll just dry brush over the entire thing now where it's green. I will probably use, for the protein spikes, I will probably use uh, a bit of purple. Alright, so I'll change the colour of those. I want those to be completely separate to the monster. Okay, so I'm starting to run out. Load your paintbrush a bit more. Whoops, again, you've got to empty it. Okay, and then just a little one over the head there. Yeah, just pulling out the highlights of that monster. And you can see it goes on, my paint goes on quite light, but then it dries a bit darker. Okay, so get dry brushing. Tomorrow we are going to, uh, so for shadows before I finish there, um, for shadows, so in the eyes, I will dry brush um, white inside of the eyes, but then what I'll do is I will mix a um, ever so slightly like blue colour, all right, and I'll dry brush inside of there as well. And underneath here, I might dry brush a darker shade of purple, all right, just to add those highlights. Not essential, it just kind of makes the model look even more realistic, all right. So tomorrow, um, I am going to get onto the fantastic bits, uh, the bits that I absolutely love where we are going to use plastic bottle so you need a plastic bottle and a glue stick if you have one if you don't have a glue stick then i'll come up with alternatives uh ways that you can stick the plastic into the protein spikes i'll have a think tonight but if you can get a hold of a glue stick from your local supermarket that would be really really useful and i'm going to show you how if you want to how you want to make the um glass kind of look like it's protruding out of the stems i'm aware that that's not 
how the COVID um, cell looks or the protein spike looks, but um, my obviously the, the protein spikes are what are predominantly kind of infecting us, so I thought it'd be quite nice to put broken glass on there so that, um, that it's almost like stopping the protein cell from spreading um, because it's, it's obviously getting stuck with the, of the uh, glass. I also thought it made it look a little bit more evil. I am then going to show you how to use Vaseline and flour. So if you've run out of flour like I have after using all of it for paper mache, then uh, maybe get yourself a little bit of um, flour, just cheap flour will do. And the Vaseline is really, really good because you can use that to kind of create a, a slime that doesn't actually ooze out. Now you can make a slime using um, borax, but again, that's not something that you would ordinarily have at home. So that's why we're going to use um, Vaseline. Most households have Vaseline. Again, I'll come up with alternatives for you. Uh, and you probably need some tissue as well, kitchen roll will do. Uh, but those special effects are the bit that I'm really excited about. So uh, make sure you have a little look at that video tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.